Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the reluctant neighbor. Jesus told more than 30 parables to help people learn how to live a life that is pleasing to God. People loved not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that he wanted to change. In last week, we learned about the rich man and Lazarus, and we discovered that after the rich man died, he was escorted to Hades, while Lazarus was escorted to paradise by angels. This parable is about a poor man who was helped by the Lord. Many poor people write to me, and we extend the help of God into the lives of poor people around the world. It is also a warning to everyone to prepare for our eternal future. The Old Testament teaches that before Jesus came to earth, when people died, they either went to Hades or to a place called Abraham's bosom. And in this parable, Jesus described an imaginary conversation taking place between the rich man and Father Abraham. The rich man pleads with Abraham to send Lazarus to bring him a drop of water to cool his tongue. And Abraham answered him by saying, Between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who are there who would pass from there to you may not be able and none may cross over from here, from there to us. Luke chapter 16 and verse 26. Now, over the last 20 years, much research has been done with people who have had near-death experiences. And there are popular books and movies about people who've been taken to heaven and reported on the peace they felt and the beautiful things that they saw. Scholars have interviewed people from a wide range of religious backgrounds, all of the major religions of the world, including atheists and people from diverse ethnicities. They have discovered that people reported not only having heavenly encounters, they also had dark or hellish encounters. In the past, people have seemed reluctant to talk about their negative near-death experiences, but more and more people are coming forward to share their story. Frequently, they speak about seeing people wailing and gnashing their teeth. And many use the words that Jesus used in this parable, a place of torment, of intense heat and anguish, to describe what they saw and experienced. They describe seeing cruelty beyond anything they'd ever seen in horror movies. The good news is that some people with terrifying hellish experiences, remember being given a second chance. Some recall stories from the Bible they learned when they were very young and cried out to God for help. And God, in his mercy, did indeed help them. And most, when they returned to their bodies, made significant changes in their spiritual lives. These reports have helped people think about what happens after one dies. You've had a near-death experience that was either positive or negative. We encourage you to take steps to prepare for eternity. Now, in today's parable, the reluctant neighbor, Jesus taught his disciples what to expect from God when they talked to him. Now, after teaching the disciples the Lord's Prayer, Jesus shared two stories with them about how to talk to God. And while we call this prayer for Jesus, prayer looked much more like having a conversation with a close friend. He taught about the difference between how friends talk to them about their need, how friends talk about their need, and how a son talked to him or talked to a father about their need. Jesus said, which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, Lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. Luke chapter 11, verse 5 and 6. And without opening the door of his home, the reluctant neighbor rep 
replied, Do not bother for me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, and I cannot get up and give you anything. Luke chapter 11, verse 7. But the man refused to accept his neighbor's reply. And Jesus said, I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is a friend, yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. Luke chapter 11 and verse 8. Now, impudence might not be a word that most people are familiar with. It simply means to refuse to give up, to keep on making a request, or to keep working until a problem is solved. The New International Translation helps us, especially people living in a shame and honor culture, to understand the story. Here's what the NIV says. Yet, because of your shameful audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. NIV 2011, Luke verse 11, chapter 11 and verse 8. Now, people in the East understand this situation very well. A man would rather shame his neighbor into helping him than feel the shame of not being able to offer food to a friend who has just arrived. The man was willing to make his neighbor feel ashamed for not helping him offer hospitality. Now, some teachers who misunderstand the purpose of the story suggest that this is what we need to do to get our prayers answered by God. This is not the point of Jesus' story. The reluctant neighbor is not an example of how God responds to our prayers. The purpose of this parable is to make a contrast between how religious people think and the truth that Jesus came to release. Now, here are some reasons why the reluctant neighbor does not portray the heart of God. For one thing, Father God never sleeps. Father God is never bothered by our request. Father God will never tell you to go away. And the door to heaven is never closed. In fact, it seems that the doors and windows of heaven are particularly open at the midnight cries of the people of God. And so the first story Jesus told is about a friend asking for help. But the second story Jesus told is about a son asking his father for help. And there's a very big difference between a friend and a son. The first story is what not to do. The second story is what we need to know about the heart of God and what to expect from him when we talk to him. Jesus went on to say, What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a scorpion? Or if he asks for an egg, will indeed give him a scorpion or a serpent? Luke chapter 11, verse 11 and 12. What a shocking question. It must have drawn a very strong reaction from the disciples. All of them must have said to themselves, no, 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 no good father would ever think about doing such a thing. And after this, Jesus said, if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly father give Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Luke chapter 11, verse 13. If a persistent man can move the heart of an unwilling neighbor, How much more will your heavenly Father be moved by your needs? God is moved because we are his children. And Father God loves to respond to his sons and his daughters. Because God is moved by our need, we don't need to beg God for an answer to our prayer. Prayer is simply asking God to help us meet our needs, and he's willing to do that. After this, Jesus said, everyone who asks receives, and everyone who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be open. Luke chapter 11 and verse 10. Aren't you glad Jesus said everyone? Jesus said, ask, and you will receive. His brother James said, you have not 
because you ask not. When Matthew recorded the story, he wrote, If you then are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11. Father does indeed want to give good gifts to his children. But Luke is much more specific about what we really need when we ask God for anything. Notice again what Luke said, If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will Heavenly Father give Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Luke chapter 11, verse 13. The most important gift that Father wants to give to all of his children is the gift of Holy Spirit. When we receive Holy Spirit, we receive the one who brings the presence and power of God into our lives. Holy Spirit guides us in the decisions we need to make about what to do and where to go. Holy Spirit re releases the provision we need for the things we desire. Holy Spirit releases the power of God to flow through our lives to heal people and to set them free. Holy Spirit, thank you that you know the needs of everyone listening to this message. Fill each one with your presence. Now, some have just felt Holy Spirit coming upon them. Some have actually fallen down under the weight of his presence coming upon them. That's a good thing. Stay in his presence. Let him wash over you with good gifts from heaven. Some listening to this message have been asking God for a healing. I release healing to you by the power of Holy Spirit. Cancer, go in Jesus' name. Lame legs, be strengthened. Walk, rise up and walk, dear one. Feet be strengthened right now by the power of Jesus. Shoulder pain, go in Jesus' name. And all brain injuries be healed by the power of Holy Spirit. Some listening to this message or hearing for the very first time that you don't need to beg or try to bribe God into helping you. Simply tell him what you need and wait for his spirit to touch you. Now the greatest gift Father wants to give to people is the gift of salvation. Jesus died for you in your place on the cross to pay for all of your sins. Ask him to forgive you and give you the gift of his presence living inside of you. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill each one listening to this message with your presence. If you just decided to follow Jesus, write to me, and I will share more information with you on the blessing of becoming a child of God next week. We'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.